Koyach, Rabbi Harrigan, Mishra Kotel, for arranging these wonderful programs. It's the most appropriate time of the year to possibly have a program like this. Um, bring to the with Talmud Torah, and speak about Inyanim that are relevant to this Kufa and to Klai Yisrael. I'd like to speak about Vafrecha Kamocha, and I'd like to speak about Vafrecha Kamocha in a way that is true to Halacha and is relevant to us. Unfortunately, we tend to have a very sort of, I would say idyllic, but that's not even true. Some sort of fantasy of Vafrecha Kamocha means we put our arms around each other, we dance in a big circle around a campfire, and we just love each other, and, and so on. That is, A, not a doable thing. It's not the halacha, it's not what's required, it's not what we should work on. Um, somebody once told me a, I guess, shot of the word, which I th- felt was very, very true, and I thought about it many years. The word v'ahavtor echa kamocha means to love everyone not to like everyone. Let's make that clear. Liking is a personal emotion. There's people that I feel much easier to be friends with. I um, like them. We have a natural kinship. We we have similar interests, similar personality. A person um, does a shidduch with one woman. Um, And that is very, very appropriate. The Torah is not mandating that I should like everyone equally. Um, that it's a personal preference. The Torah is not mandating that type of emotion. The Torah is mandating and mandating it in the most strong way possible. I'd like to look at um, two or three halachas regarding it, and I would like to focus on that. The first one is the Rambam, who should always be our first location for halacha. Gimel. It's an Hilchas day as Perek Vav Halacha Gimel. Mitzvah kol adam leos kol echad of Yisrael ki gufo. Everyone has a mitzvah to love everyone else as he loves himself. Shenem v'aftar kamocha. Okay. So what is that mandate? And therefore what? Lefikach. Tzorech l'sape b'shvachoy v'lochas al mamono the halacha lemaisa of after recha kamocha is someone who is you care about the person's um, welfare, financial welfare, v'lochos al mamono, and tzoruch l'sape b'shvachol. Now that means as follows. I have an obligation to care about somebody, both in terms of his finances and terms of his personal dignity and 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 um, place in society. I would say. Now, the Gemara actually says that Hillel told this person who came to be Misgaya, he told him. I want one mitzvah, the Ger told him famously, I, tell me one mitzvah that will cover the entire Torah. I can stand on one foot and know all of Torah. And he f- rephrased it. I told him, Things that you don't like, do not do to the other person. Now, let's take a closer look at the Rambam and see what it mandates. The first thing is, Chos al mamono. Now, let's understand something. The Rambam is not talking about charity. He's not talking about chesed. For instance, um, the, uh, the, the, the giving money and helping a poor person is a mitzvah in its own right. And it's a mitzvah that is stoka, falach de bedracha, many other points, sick poets. That is a wonderful mitzvah. And I'd like to make a note about that. Chal Yisrael Baruch Hashem is extremely, um, it, 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 they're to be commended about the amount of tzedakah we do, the amount of chesed we do, the amount of care 
in, in for sick people, Baruch Hashem, Kaleisol has much to be proud of. And this last Kufa has really shown a lot. And that's not the point. The Ramam says Chasal Mamono means to care about the other person's money that he possesses. Let's understand a little bit this point. Um, Rabbi Isaac Sher, who was the uh, son of the Alta Slavotka and a Shiva Slavotka, and a person who was very astute in understanding people, once made the following remark. People do not mind helping other people, even in ways that require a larger expenditure of money, time, etc., so long as the other person knows that I helped him, so long as it's clear that I was the person that helped him. Let's try to understand that a little bit. More than anything else, goods and things I wish to possess, and everyone wishes to possess, giving it away to somebody else is a bit tough. But more than anything else, I want to be in possession of a very strong and powerful sense of self. And that is all about me and my desire to be. I, so even when I have possessions that I go after, it, a lot of times has a lot more to do with the standing it gives me rather than with the possession itself. A status symbol gives me status. I may never even use all the rooms in the house, but it's a status symbol. I, 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 there's many possessions I have that I get very little out of, but I present it and it's chashev. There's also film security and my own dignity, what people say about me, what people um, talk about is more than anything else, the most important um, is, is, is my most important possession, I would say, but possession is, is understatement. So the Torah says, as much as you're concerned about your own welfare, whether it's finances or whether it's person, that's how much you have to care about the other person. So um, he says, care about his loss of money. I'm not sure quite what that, uh, in the Rambam it's not clear about what exactly is the case we're talking about. I, my assumption would be to do a business deal with somebody where the other person is going to be get a raw deal, even though he agrees to it, it's fine, but I wouldn't want to do it myself he may be oblivious. Why would I want to trick him or trap him or, or make use of his naivete um, or whatever else is driving it? It should bother me if a person is on the brink of doing something disastrous. Now, if I'm a very successful businessman, this other person is a very successful businessman, and he's making a move that is going to really reduce his, his, his standing, his wealth, I'm very tempted not to say anything because it makes me a lot better. The, the, the poor person is not going to starve to death. He, thank God he has enough money, but he'll take a loss. Do I really care about it? Would I pick up a phone and say, listen, I heard you about to do this deal. I believe that it, it's a very bad deal for the following reasons. Um, maybe, maybe not, but that's the type of thing that Ram is talking about, where he says, has one. Two, that I care about the person's dignity and standing. As the Ramam says, I need to make sure that this person's dignity and standing is not compromised. And I give it in the appropriate place. I want to talk about this because this, I think, is probably our greatest Nisoya. Like I said before, help and chesed and stucker, thank God, Kali Yisrael is wonderful. And it's Baruch Hashem from our stronger points. But 
talking about somebody else saying anything negative when not warranted it puts the person down a notch or two or three and people know that he's kind of uh, short on certain middles now the irony is and you see this all the time when people um, ask about a shidduch everyone says oh my gosh I'm not going to say anything to spoil the shidduch well you've got an obligation to um, you've got an obligation to tell the other party things that would be important to them and I'd like to make a, I'd like to make a comment about it. Of course, these are very sensitive issues need to be asked um, by a Rav when it comes specifically. But in a Shidduch also, using the right words makes all the difference between um, kind of busting something or, or, or giving something information he needs. Let's take an example. Imagine somebody um, is very a person is very meticulous in his finances he writes down every month how much he earned what he can spend on safety margin needs and so on someone who's a very different personality calls me up and asks what about so and so um now because the person who asked me is a very different person he likes just to kind of spend money telling him that he's wonderful will create problems it's a very it's a very different mentality if I say the person is stingy, um, or any synonym to stingy, then I've destroyed the other person. I've, get, I've besmirched him for no reason. If I say he's very cautious, he's a person who likes very much that everything he needs to be sure, everything is, is spent with caution and so on. I've given the information, the important information, and I haven't said anything negative about the person, and, and, and it's, it's not a pejorative. So phrasing the person and, and saying if somebody is, is um, for example, if you ask if somebody is smart or not, it's so you could, one answer is, yeah, he's brilliant. And then it, it might create a problem if that's not what the person is looking for. Um, to say the person is stupid is besmirching a person and, and, and it's, it's sort of degrading a person. It's denigrating a person. But let's say you say, He's much smarter intuitively than he is academically. That, that gives it a different frame of reference. So th there is no good answer in Shidduchim what to say, but you do not have the right to re retain information that's important for the other person. And you have no right to denigrate somebody. Just, oh, you have to rack your brain and ask yourself, how would, how would you like to be presented? Every person can has a sense of himself. Every person knows that you can make certain comments about the person. Uh, you can say he's a frummy, or you could say he's very careful, how luck is important to him. It's, very, it, it's the same thing, maybe, and it means two different things. So caring about other people's dignity is number one. Every time you say a story about somebody else, you say something about somebody else, ask yourself, if somebody was telling this story about me, would I be happy? Would I not be happy? That's a simple, that's a simple test. If I'm not happy with it, then, then this goes against what he says. You need to have your covered. Um, you need to care about the other person's covered and what you care about yourself. If somebody was going out telling people that you're X or Y or Z or a story like this, you would be very upset and hurt then you're not allowed to talk about the other person. So the first great area that I think is relevant, every time we mention another person in a story, we need to ask ourselves, um, if I were the person the story was about, the same story, would I be happy, upset, or whatever? That's the rule I need to apply to the other person. There's another area that I think is extremely relevant, and it is from the Chavetz Chaim, the same person who wrote the Mishabura that we all base, it's our default posseg, um, wrote many, 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 many sparim, small sparim, and one of them is called the Kuti Amarim, which is a collection of different essays, different topics. And one of them he writes about, it's in the second parak in the Kuti Amarim, 
and he writes about knowing some rudimentary Choshe Mishpat, um, knowing halachas that are relevant for anyone who is a storekeeper or whatever, even though Choshe Mishpat is extremely, extremely complex, but there, is, there are enough halachas that can be reduced to, you know, halacha lemaisa, and he encourages people to know, to understand, to learn. But then he adds a rule, a rule of the thumb that should be your guide in those broad gray areas where halacha does not specifically address it. And this is obviously very common in Dine Mamanos, in, in, in financial laws, in laws of, of finances. It's, it's such a vast field and there's so many different permutations that there's almost no two cases the same. Most of the time, a Bezdin has to sort of sort out what is it similar to and so on. So, um, is, so in, there are certain halachas, obviously, that are clearly wrong. But then there's a gray area, which many times, if somebody were to ask you, you would say, I can't find anything halachically wrong with it. Um, that, there's many things like that. The Chavetz Chaim says, but if, so you're doing a business deal with somebody, and, and the business deal is technically mutter. In other words, there is no clear halacha that speaks against it. If you know that, let's say you would have been at the, the, the deal was reversed. You were selling somebody a house, property, a home, a this or that, without uh, disclosing this or knowing this or whatever it is. And then you were to find it out, you'd be very upset with the other person. The halacha is you're not allowed to do it because it violates the sani the sani loch lechavet loisavit. My daloch sani lechavet loisavit. In other words, vahaftalur echa kamocha pachan paskins mandates that any type of situation, any type of deal that you would be upset with. You cannot do that deal with someone else. Let's say, hypothetically, you're a kind of rough and tough, you know, kind of uh, take the falls type of person, and you expect to, that somebody would put a deal like that in you, and if he does it, you really don't care, and you, you take him full stride, then fine. You're not over after her come off the other person. Most of the time, it's the other way around. We tend to have, uh, we tend to expect more yashas from other people towards us than the other way around. So, so this halacha itself is, um, you know, it, it's more relevant when we would have tainus. The same thing is true in any area, in a shul. If, let's say, I was looked over for a certain keyboard, would I be upset? So if I'd be upset, then having somebody else um, live through it is a, is a problem. That's all called time passes. So we have here two major applications of after Kamocha that are in the realm of loving other people, which let's take the word love because it's become such a um, fantasy word. And let's take the term that we really should use, care for the other person's dignity and welfare. That's the right word for it. Vahavter Kamocha means care for the person with the same degree that you care for yourself. So, and let's, let's see, the other person's call light, you left the call light on. Should I bother to go to him and tell him to close it? Well, would you like to have your battery drain? If, if not, then you should go. You should care about the moment. But after Kamocha means to care. The big two areas that I feel are the halacha that are relevant to us is as follows. One, other people's dignity. And the most common application would be one in, in talking about another person. When we talk about other people, um, just substitute our name or substitute our child's name. That usually would, would about ourselves, we kind of, uh, we, yeah, I wouldn't care, I wouldn't care. Okay, your, your child's name. Put, put your name in, in, in uh, someone else's boy answered a very stupid answer to a question asked in class. And you're telling it over. What would you feel like if it was your child 
and you and someone told me the story. That that's the obligation of after Kamocha, not to tell about somebody else. It also means that if a person doesn't have social standing in a way that if you were that way, this person never gets called out for anything important, is never marked. If the person is missing in his covered, in a cover that we would consider to be what I would like, I would feel that at least once every so often someone should invite me out. Or once every so often somebody should call me out and say what I'd be interested in doing this and that. That goes in Farah Kamocha. And Baruch Hashem today a society where very few people frankly, are starving to death, but the need to be recognized and accepted is universal. And, and when people are scrambling for bread, that's less important, perhaps. But when people are, have a modicum of you know, what they need to, to live on, standing and, and dignity and, and all of these are things that are these necessities, and that is not the most Secondly, whatever dealings we do with other people, um, if financial type dealings, we need to ask ourselves, what is the, um, what would be my position if it had been reversed? If the deal had been done in a way where I was short, at the short end, this other person was uh, the, the winner. And same exact situation, would you be upset or would you not be upset? If I were not to be upset, then it's fine. But if I would be upset, then there's an issue. I want to go back to a story we all heard at least a thousand times. And Vafler Kamocha, Bayez Sheni was um, destroyed for Sinas Chinam. And the story that Chazal present is Kamsa Bar Kamsa. Now, um, it, 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 so what happened? So, so, so if Chazal picked one story, that story obviously embodies everything wrong with the society. Nobody was left starving. Poor Bar Kamsa was not left uh, hungry. He, did, he had what to eat that night. He, he, it was clear, I mean, he was being invited to somebody's house that he was not on speaking terms of. So it's not as if he expected it. You know, the, the, it wasn't, the, 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 the thing that happened was someone suffered an indignity. And we wouldn't even think it's, I mean, it's not pleasant, but imagine you, you by mistake got invited to the worst, to your worst enemy's uh, chasna, and when he sees you, he says, "You know, I, I, I just can't bear the fact that you're there." We'd be, a, we'd be annoyed maybe that we went there, but I, I don't think we were so upset, so hurt. But it bonded our camp. So to be singled out and to be told to leave was an indignity, not more, not less, and that's what Chazal pick as the reason for. The, the Chorb. It, it's obviously, it, it was it was just a, a sort of a, a, an example of what was going on, but this was the example was picked. So, Va'afra Kemocha has nothing to do with liking people. Everyone has a hierarchy of friends that he feels closer to naturally, based on his personality and so on. It's not so much focused on Chesed and Staka. Um, we do Chesed and Staka out of pity, out of Achmanis, which is wonderful, but it's not it's not out of because we value the other person as myself. Barakamach means to give the other person the same standing we'd like for ourselves. And even if I bitterly disagree with the other person and and uh, have many run-ins, I can still disagree strongly and still retain the sense of covet for the other person. The 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 um, the Vafter Kamoch mandates that we care about everybody, care about everybody's dignity, and care about everybody's sense of being righted or wronged. Rez Hashem, if we'll work on these things, um, making sure that the way we treat other people is the way we would like to be treated, what we say about them, and, and the place and position we give them in public, and our dealings with other people would carry the same preferences that I would like for myself, will have been Mekayim, the Mitzvah after Kamocha, 
as the Chiyuv, uh, as is the Chiyuv. And Bez Hashem will be a, a big step closer to the Gula Bez Hashem in Meir Yameinu. Oh, 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 oh,